Hey guys, the objective of this video is to discuss 3D consolidation against 1D, 1D consolidation and to look at an undrained case. So we're going to look at all the undrained formulas. And in the next video, we're going to be looking at the drained formula. So this video is just the undrained. So in the past, we've been looking at 1D consolidation. Every single thing we've done, whether it be consolidation, settlement, all those formulas are based on the assumption that we're looking at one dimension, so that our consolidation or settlement is only occurring in 1D, and we've been looking at the, that being the depth of our soil profile. But in reality, it happens in 3D, so we need to now develop criteria for stresses and strains in three dimensions, which is going to allow us to calculate settlements and consolidations in 3D, which is more accurate than 1D. So it, we're doing the same thing, we're finding a cell, at the end of the day, we're going to be finding a settlement or a consolidation except it's now in 3D, so we have a different criteria. So this can happen over a drained or undrained sample. So if we first look at a drained sample, so this is, we'll do undrained, and this sample is drained. So what that means is, we have, as we know, solid particles, solid soil particles, we have water, and we'll have pockets of air, and we'll apply a load. Now this load is felt all by the water, which means that we get a buildup of excess pour water pressure. Okay, so we get an excess of pour water pressure because our sample is undrained. If it's drained, that means that the pour water pressures are free to escape. So there might be a gap in the soil, a gap in our sample which allows the excess pore water pressures to escape. We still have pore water pressure, but we no longer have excess pore water pressure. So we say that this sample is drained. In this video, we're just going to be looking at the undrained.